हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम सी एस सोनाली जिंदल सो दिस इज अवर पार्ट थ्री बी हेयर वी विल कवर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन ऑफ द टॉपिक्स दैट वी हैव कवर्ड इन पार्ट थ्री ए बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आउट द लेक्चर आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू अबाउट माई इनिशिएटिव दैट इज प्रिलिम्स दोस्त प्रोग्राम दिस इज अ अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू एज आई एम टेकिंग ओनली ट्वेंटी फाइव स्टूडेंट्स टू होम आई विल गिव पर्सनलाइज स्ट्रेटी एंड टाइम टेबल एंड आई विल फोकस कंप्लीटली ऑन दैम and they can ask me any doubt 24/7 i will reply to them within 24 hours and this call will be on the google meet or an on phone call as per the aspirant demand i will also share my notes on his demand and we will aim to cover at least three times revision of all syllabus and it will also include two full length test based on previous year questions after that i will have a one to one call support for discussing approach so that we can find out the problems faced and it will also include the previous year questions logical guessing guessing videos for more details you can contact on the number that has been given on the screen and i and i will also share this in my description let's do first question here Which of the following constitutes the capital account? Let's first revise what we have done in the last lecture. Current account transactions include visible goods trade, invisible trade, and net transfers. In capital account transactions, what is included? Investments that includes FDI, FII, GDRs, loans either taken by the sovereign government or by the private companies that is called as external commercial borrowings, and the other one is banking capital. This includes deposit. done by the non residents in the country so for loans yes this is capital account fdi yes this is capital account private remittances no this is current account we have seen here portfolio investment yes this is also capital account so answer is 1 2 and 4 price of any currency in the international market is decided by in the last lecture we have seen price of any currency is dependent on the demand and supply of that currency this demand and supply of currency depends on the demand and supply of its goods in the international market so first world bank no this is not answer let's eliminate a and d so we are left with 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 in this you can see 3 is common so we need not to read the third statement let's read second statement demand for the goods and services provided by the country concerned yes this is true so answer is b let's read third statement as well stability of the government of the concerned country yes this is true this this we have seen in the case of russia ukraine war one of the important goals of the economic liberalization policy is to achieve full convertibility of the indian rupee convertibility we have seen this is of two types one is current account convertibility and other is capital account convertibility in india for the current account transaction there is a full convertibility but for the account transactions there is a partial convertibility that is done on the basis of recommendation of tala port committee let's read first statement convertibility of the rupee will stabilize the exchange value against the major currencies of the world agar full convertibility hoti hai rather wo more unstabilize karegi currency ki value ko kyunki wo zyada jaldi jo hai convertible hogi jaise for example agar fdi ke liye full convertibility ho jaye to iska matlab kya hai outflow bahut zyada easy ho jayega to it will rather unstabilize the exchange value so first statement is wrong second statement it will attract more foreign capital inflow in india yes this is true because it will result in the full capital account transactions convertibility so this is fdi answer is b let's read third statement it will help to promote exports no this is current account transaction 
fourth statement it will help india to secure loans from the world financial markets at attractive terms no this is not true because securing loan also depend on other factors so answer is b next question capital account convertibility of the indian rupee what it implies it means capital account transactions ke liye agar jo domestic currency hai wo convertible ho jaye easily into foreign currency जैसे हमने एग्जाम्पल देखी थी रतन टाटा जी की टू बाय जैकवार कंपनी दैट द इंडियन रूपी कैन बी एक्सचेंज बाय द एथोराइज डीलर्स फॉर द ट्रेवल नो दिस इज करंट अकाउंट ट्रांजेक्शन दैट द इंडियन रूपी कैन बी एक्सचेंज फॉर एनी मेजर करेंसी फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ ट्रेड इन गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज वॉट इट इज इन विजिबल एंड विजिबल गुड्स ट्रेड वॉट इट इज करंट अकाउंट ट्रांजेक्शन सो Let's read third statement that the Indian rupee can be exchanged for any major currency for the trading of, for the purpose of trading of financial assets. There, yes, this is capital account transaction. So answer is C. Next question: Full convertibility of the rupee may mean free float with the international currencies. Yes, direct exchange with any international currency as any prescribed place inside and outside the country. Yes. It just like any other international currency. Yes, so answer is D. We will read participatory notes in the next lecture in detail. But for the ones, these are type of foreign institutional investors. In the last lecture, we have read forex reserves include foreign currency, gold, SDRs, reserve tranche. Next equation. Uh, what it is included in the foreign exchange reserves? Foreign currency assets, yes. SDRs, yes. Loan from the foreign countries, no. Foreign currency assets, gold holdings, SDRs, yes. So answer is B. In third statement, loans from the World Bank, no. Loans from the World Bank, no. So answer is B. The Indian rupee is fully convertible. We have seen in current account transactions there is a full convertibility, but for the capital account transactions there is a partial. convertibility that is based on the taraport committee so answer here the uh, answer is a for the current it is true for the capital no into the gold no global capital flows to the ca developing countries increased significantly during the 90s in the view of the east asian financial crisis and latin american experience which type of inflow is good for the host country Here you need to understand the difference between equity and debt. What is equity? जो ओनर्स इन्वेस्ट करते हैं जैसे शेयर होल्डर्स होते हैं दे कंट्रोल द कंपनीज वोटिंग शेयर एंड हैव अ से इन द डिसीजन मेकिंग बट दीज आर नॉट ओनर्स रेदर दे आर जस्ट लाइक प्रोवाइडर्स लोन प्रोवाइडर्स लाइक अ बैंक अब अगर सपोज करो कि कंपनी लिक्विडिटी की पोजीशन में आ जाए इट मीन्स इट्स नॉट अ प्रॉफिटेबल कंपनी Now it is on the position of winding up. अगर winding up मतलब कोई अगर business बंद होने वाला है तो पहले loan को loan देने वालों को पैसा देंगे या owners को obviously to the loan providers. So there is a more obligation on the debentures or debt. Here in any circumstance interest needs to be paid and this needs to be paid in the priority to the equity. So these are liability that creates the obligation. that to fixed obligation so in the case of commercial loan it will not be beneficial for the country rather it will increase the liability of the uh, in the case of crisis fdi this is form of equity and moreover it also brings the 
expertise and technology will which will increase the investment and the capital output then a uh, foreign portfolio investment this is equity but these are more volatile because they exit overnight in from the country next is external commercial borrowing these are also type of loan that is taken by the private company from the foreign countries so the answer is b here in this question which of the verb action will reduce the current account deficit now just rewind what is current account transactions visible goods trade invisible goods trade that includes services any interest dividend from the investment then transfers that includes remittances donation and gifts devaluing the domestic currency suppose there is a devaluation of domestic currency what it means pehle agar dollar rupees 80 ka tha ab wahi dollar rupees 82 ka hai matlab zyada rupee dene pad rahe hai to buy dollar what it will help it will increase exports let's rewind the example we have discussed in the last lecture suppose a person was selling goods at 80000 In US, person in US has to pay eighty thousand divided by eighty. That is one thousand dollar. Now the dollar rate has reduced to seventy eight. Now he will have to pay more if price increases, demand decreases, export reduces. But in this question, there is a devaluation of the rupee. That means rupee value has dollar value has increased to eighty two. So if there is eighty two rupees, then he will have to pay. Around nine twenty five, so the price of the goods has reduced from the one thousand dollar to nine twenty five. If price decreases, then demand will increase. It will increase the exports. Current account deficit means export is less than the imports. If this difference needs to be reduce it means we have to increase the exports and decrease the imports in the first situation devalue the domestic currency it will increase the exports so first statement is right second statement reduction in the export subsidy this is wrong because reducing the export subsidy will result in reducing the exports so let's eliminate second we will be left with c and d let's read third statement adopting suitable policies which would attract greater fdi and more funds from the fiis here in this upsc is assuming if more fdi will come into the any country it will bring more expertise technology and management skills that would later result in increasing the exports so here the answer is d but agar is question mein one only or one and three ऑप्शन होता तो आई थिंक वी शुड गो फॉर वन ओनली बिकॉज थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज लिंक टू द कैपिटल काउंट ट्रांजेक्शन विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट मोस्ट लाइकली द मेजर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट और द आरबीआई टेक्स टू स्टॉप द स्लाइड ऑफ इंडियन रूपी slide of indian rupee needs can be stopped with here you need to understand rupee price depends on the supply and demand if supply of rupee increases it will results in the decrease in price if demand is increased then price will increase here we need to stop the slide of indian rupee it means hame rupee ki value girne se bachani hai to so we need to reduce the supply and increase the demand this is the crux of the statement let's do first statement curbing imports of 
नॉन असेंशियल गुड्स एंड प्रमोटिंग एक्सपोर्ट्स नाउ अगर इम्पोर्ट्स को कट कर दोगे तो क्या होगा डिमांड फॉर द डॉलर इन इंडिया विल रिड्यूस डिमांड फॉर द डॉलर रिड्यूसेस इट मींस डिमांड फॉर द रुपीस इंक्रीजिंग नेक्स्ट प्रमोटिंग एक्सपोर्ट्स इफ वी आर प्रमोटिंग एक्सपोर्ट्स इट मींस मोर डॉलर इज कम इनटू इंडिया इफ मोर डॉलर इज कमिंग इन इंडिया इट मीन्स सप्लाई ऑफ डॉलर इज इंक्रीजिंग एज कंपेयर टू रूपी सो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट But here in this question, you need to find incorrect statement. That is not most likely. So first statement will help in stopping the slide of Indian rupee. Let's read second statement. Encouraging Indian borrowers to issue rupee denominated masala bonds. For issuing rupee denominated masala bonds, what it will help? It will increase the demand of rupee. So it will also help in stopping the slide. Let's read third statement. Easing conditions relating to the ECB. If there is a ease in the conditions of ECB, what will it result into? It will increase the supply of dollar. If dollar supply is increased, it means supply of rupees decreased as compared to dollar. So it will also help in stopping the slide of Indian rupee. Let's read fourth statement: following an expansionary monetary policy. expansionary monetary policy means easy monetary policy it means rbi money supply badha raha hai by by decreasing the interest rates in the market agar money supply badh rahi hai it means it will result in to the increase in the supply of the rupee that will decrease the price of rupee so this is the answer this is also repeated question we have done in 2011 similar question was asked in 99 the valuation of currency may import it promote export yes we have done price of the currency country's products in the international market may fall due to the devaluation yes we have done see this is the example if the price of the dollar increased to 82 then price in the us will decrease from the 1000 to 925 it will increase the exports so answer is a both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a. fdi and fii are related to the investment in the country which one of the following statement best represents an important difference between the two Let's read first statement. FII brings better management skills. Yes. No. Here needs to be FDI. FDI brings only capital. No. This is true for the FII. FII helps in increasing the capital capital availability in general, while FDI only targets specific sectors. This is true. Let's read other statements. FDI flows only into the secondary market. No. This targets primary markets. Both targets primary market, but FII can be into the secondary market as well. FII is considered to be more stable. No, we have seen FDI is more stable because exit is not easy. They are getting control and they invest more than ten percent. So, answer is B. What is included in the FDI? subsidies of the foreign companies in india yes majority foreign equity holding in the indian companies yes majority means more than 50% but in here we have seen more than 10% is fdi companies exclusively financed by foreign companies it will also be more than 10% so 1 2 3 is correct portfolio investment it's not fdi rather it is fi so answer is 1 2 and 3 convertibility of the rupee implies iska kya matlab hai domestic currency agar foreign currency mein 
convert ho jayega converting rupee into the gold no allowing the value of the rupee to be fixed by market forces no what it is it is exchange rate rupee which one floating as we have seen there are two types of exchange rate rupee one is fixed and other one is floating in fixed government intervenes to decide the value of domestic currency against the foreign currency in floating currency it is divided decided by market forces but india adopts managed exchange rate regime freely permitting the conversion of rupee to any other currencies and vice versa yes this is true so this question says if another global financial crisis happens in the near future which of the following policies are most likely to give immunity to india if there is a global financial crisis which thing will give immunity to india if there is a less integration with global economy so not depending on short term for borrowings yes it will give immunity opening up to more foreign banks if there is more opening to the foreign banks then there will be integration with the global economy as dependent on the foreign investment so second statement is wrong let's eliminate it we are left with a and c as we have seen first statement is correct so answer is a let's read third statement maintaining full capital account convertibility if there is a full capital account convertibility it means bahar ki fdi easily aa sakti hai aur outflow bhi ho sakti hai rather it will result into the dose of immunity this is the repetition let's see in 1996 first statement convertibility of the rupee will stabilize its exchange value against the major currencies of the world here we have seen like convertibility results in rather unstabilizing the currency value now let's do next question which of the following has or have occurred in india after its liberalization of economic policy in 1991 let's read first statement share of agriculture in gdp increased enormously here i want to show this enormously word is extreme word so you need to pay attention to this like we can think first and four can be wrong in the first statement share of agriculture in gdp increased enorm enormously we are aware that after 1991 rather share of agriculture has decreased from around 50% to 70% of the gdp so first statement is wrong we are left with b and c if we pay attention to the extreme word then we would mark c but here the fourth statement is correct as actually foreign exchange reserves has increased enormously from 6 billion dollars to 600 billion dollars so answer is b second statement share of india's export in trade has increased fdi flows has increased so answer is b question number 18 balance of payment represents a better picture of the country economic transactions with rest of the world than the balance of trade let me explain the difference between balance of trade and balance of payment if we have seen in balance of payment there are two type of transactions one is current and other one is capital current is further divided into visible goods and invisible goods here transfers services profit or dividend this visible goods trade is linked to balance of trade 
and the whole transactions linked to the balance of payment. So if there is a more import in visible goods than the export, then there is a deficit in the balance of trade. First statement, balance of payment shows the better picture, yes, because it's a broader one. Second reason, balance of payment takes into account the exchange of both invisible and visible items. Yes, it considers invisible. So, it's a reason for the assertion. So, answer is A. Balance of payment is the systematic record of all import and export transactions of the country given during a, during a given period of time, normally a year. Which one of the following sets of commodities are exported to India by the arid and semi-arid countries in Middle East? Here I want to show like whenever economic survey of that year comes, you need to pay attention to the imports and exports of India. Here the answer is B. In recent years also, UPS, UPSC has asked about the major import by India. The answer was vegetable oils. If you were aware, like, what are the major components of the imports, then you can guess there. With reference to the balance of women, which constitute the crunch account. Here we have revised. In current account, these are further divided into visible and invisible goods. So balance of trade that is visible and invisible. Foreign assets, it's a capital account transaction. SDR is a foreign exchange reserves. This is also capital account transaction. So answer is 1 and 3. This question is also based on the export and imports of India. First statement, India's merchandise exports are less than the merchandise imports. Let me show you the full chart. Here we have seen in visible goods, there is deficit. Here mercantile goods are included. In visible trade, there is a surplus that includes services. And uh, in the income, profit, interest and dividend, there is a deficit. In net transfers, there is a surplus. But there is an overall deficit in the current account transactions. So, India's mercantile exports are less than the mercantile imports. Yes, this is true. Second statement, India's import of the Iron and steel, chemicals, fertilizers and machinery have decreased in recent years. Here also I want to pay attention to the this word, decreased in the recent years. You need to pay attention to it. This is generally wrong. So you can eliminate second, first is right. So you directly reach to the answer, but let's read third. India's export of services are more than import of services. This, this is true. Export is more as there is a surplus in the services. India suffers from overall trade or current account deficit. Yes, this is true. With reference to the foreign direct investment, which one of the following is considered as a major characteristic? In this lecture only, we have understood the difference between equity and debt. FDI is equity, commercial loans or external commercial borrowings are debt or loan. Let's read first statement. It is the investment through the capital instruments essentially in the listed company. What it is? It's a FII. Second statement. It is largely non-debt creating capital flow. Third, it is the investment which involves debt servicing. Here, uh, I want to show the trick that we have used in the first lecture. That was, if there is a totally opposite statement, then one of the statement will be the answer. B and C are directly opposite to each other. Here we have seen this is an equity. 
So it's a known debt creating capital flow. So answer is B. It is the investment made by the FIA in the government securities. No, this is FIA. In 1996, UPSC asked about Hawala transactions and in 2021, it asked about black money. Let me first explain the difference between black money and money laundering. To understand the intensity of money laundering, hence, black money, it is a part of money on which tax has not been paid. But money laundering includes the proceeds of crime relating to human trafficking, arms trafficking, etc. that has been laundered into clean money. Hence, we can say black money is very narrow term that has been confused with money laundering. So, black money is simply that money on which tax has not been paid. Hence, hawala transactions are those transactions which are used to clean proceeds of crime that is money laundering. Here, money is sent overseas through unofficial channels. Hence, for the question 24, answer is A. That is received in rupees against overseas currencies and vice versa without going through official channels. Which one of the following affects the creation of black money in the India has been the cause of worry to the government of India? For the question of 25, answer is D. That is loss of revenue to the ex state exchequer due to tax evasion. Now, if you read the first statement, here, diversion of resources to the purchase of real estate and investment in luxury housing. Here, although black money is used to buy real estate, but it is not direct meaning of black money. Rather, statement D directly relates to the black money. Now, if you read the third statement of question 25, that is large donation to political parties and growth of regionalism. And if you read the fourth statement of question 24, made to the political parties or to the individuals for meeting election expenses. Here you can see UPSC has used the similar kind of statement to confuse you. So if similar kind of statement repeats in next years, then you can eliminate such type of statements. Question number 26. In the last one decade, which one of the among sectors has attracted the highest FDI inflows into India? Here, in this coming economic survey you need to focus on it here the answer is b currently also this sector is receiving the highest fdi now coming to 27 question which one of the following is issued by the registered portfolio investors to overseas investors who want to be the part of indian stock market without registering themselves directly here the answer is d that is participatory notes but we will cover all these in the next video including external commercial borrowing as well. Coming to question number 28, with reference to the Indian economy, consider the following statements. If the inflation is too high, RBI is likely to buy government securities. Here you need to remember the summary chart that we discussed in lecture 1. Let's revise that. Now here government is buying government securities. Buying government securities, what it means? It means paisa aega with public. पब्लिक के पास पैसा आएगा इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब है मनी सप्लाई विल इंक्रीज विद इट मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज्ड व्हाट इट विल डू इट विल इंक्रीज द परचेजिंग पावर ऑफ पीपल एज दे विल हैव मोर मनी टू बाय इन द मार्केट दैट इंक्रीज्ड परचेजिंग पावर विल इंक्रीज द डिमांड ऑफ पीपल इन द मार्केट एज वी हैव लर्नड इफ डिमांड इंक्रीजेस दिस इंक्रीजेस द प्राइसेस ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट this price increased, it means inflation will increase in the market. Which inflation is this? This is demand pull inflation. Now we have seen like if government, if RBI is buying government securities, it means inflation will increase. Now in this question, if inflation is too high, so RBI needs to sell government securities. So eliminate first, you directly reach to answer B. But in this question, we will do with other statements.
in this second statement says if the rupee is rapidly depreciating what it means pehle dollar agar 80 rupees ka tha now wahi dollar agar 82 rupees ka ho gaya matlab zyada rupee chahiye to buy dollar now let's understand with example we discussed in the last lecture here पहले डॉलर फिफ्टी रुपीस का था और अब अगर डॉलर सिक्सटी रुपीस का हो गया इसका क्या मतलब है डॉलर की सप्लाई कम है किसी भी चीज का प्राइस किस चीज से इंक्रीज होता है अगर उस चीज की जो सप्लाई है वो कम हो जाए और डिमांड जो है इंक्रीज हो जाए अब सप्लाई जो है डॉलर की कम है तो आरबीआई क्या करेगा डॉलर की कमी को आरबीआई पूरी करेगा बाय सेलिंग डॉलर्स। डॉलर सेल करके रुपी जो है दोबारा से रिवेल्यूएशन हो जाएगी सिमिलरली इफ रुपी एप्रिशिएट्स इट मींस डॉलर प्राइस रिड्यूस टू रुपीज फोर्टी इट मींस देर इज अ मोर सप्लाई ऑफ डॉलर इन द मार्केट फॉर द एग्जाम यू नीड टू रिमेम्बर दिस समरी सो यू कैन डू क्यूकली एज रूपी एप्रिशिएट आर एक्शन विल बी टू बाय डॉलर एंड इन द ऑपोजिट सिचुएशन आर विल सेल डॉलर Now let's see the statement given in the question. Here, rupee is depreciating. It means dollar supply is less. What RBI will do? RBI will sell dollar. So this statement is right. In the third statement, you need to see if the interest rate in the foreign land, like USA, is increasing the interest rate. If USA is increasing the interest rate, तो क्या इंडिया में इन्वेस्टमेंट आएगी नो बिकॉज इट इज ऑलरेडी गेटिंग हायर रिटर्न बट इन दिस क्वेश्चन इट इज सेंग इंटरेस्ट रेट इज फॉलोइंग इन द फॉरन लैंड लाइक यू एस ए और यूरोपियन यूनियन सो एफ डी आई आई एफ डी आई और एफ आई आई विल कम टू इंडिया वट इट मीन्स इफ एफ डी आई इज कमिंग टू इंडिया इट मीन्स डॉलर सप्लाई विल इंक्रीज increase dollar supply what it will do it will appreciate the rupee value rupee appreciation let's see the summary what rbi will do in the rupee appreciation rbi will buy the dollar so this is also correct answer is b 2 and 3 only Question number twenty nine. Which one of the following situations best reflect the indirect transfers often talked about in media recently with reference to India? This indirect transfers is related to the Vodafone case, which may Indian company ke shares one foreign company transfer to the another foreign company. So answer is D. A foreign company transfer shares such shares drive their substantial value from the assets located in India. Now coming to question number thirtieth. Here in this question. Firstly, we will revise the concepts that we have read in first and balance of payment lecture. Here, capital and revenue. Let's understand the difference between capital and revenue. Capital क्या है? It's a non-recurring in nature, जो के हर बार ना हो. For example, Mr. A gets a loan from the bank. क्या ये हर बार loan लेगा? नहीं. So it's a capital. सैलरी उसको हर बार आएगी यस सो इट्स अ रेवेन्यू इन नेचर बट अब ये देखें तो रेवेन्यू इसका मतलब क्या है इट्स अ रियक्रिंग इन नेचर जो कि बार बार खर्चा हो अब ये लोन जो है इसमें क्या होगा कि ये रिसीट है या एक्सपेंडिचर अब रिसीट क्या होता है और एक्सपेंडिचर क्या होता है रिसीट का मतलब है पैसे का आना और एक्सपेंडिचर का मतलब है पैसे का जाना सो so, लोन क्या है कैपिटल रिसीट सैलरी क्या है रेवेन्यू रिसीट अब देखते हैं कि जैसे मिस्टर ए ने कार को बाय किया अब ये क्या है इसमें पैसा जा रहा है और ये हर बार नहीं होगा तो कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर अब हम इसी में ये समझते हैं कि कैपिटल और करंट ट्रांजैक्शंस में क्या डिफरेंस है कैपिटल ट्रांजैक्शंस और करंट ट्रांजैक्शंस अगर देखें तो कैपिटल ट्रांजैक्शंस कौन सी होती हैं जो कि लॉन्ग टर्म इन नेचर हो और करंट ट्रांजैक्शंस जो शॉर्ट टर्म इन नेचर हो नाउ दिस करंट ट्रांजैक्शंस कैन बी रिलेटेड टू और 
you can relate it with revenue transactions. Now let's read the question. Acquiring new technology is a capital expenditure, yes, as it is a long term in nature and it will benefit in the long run to increase the capacity of that company. Reading uh, debt financing is a considered as capital expenditure. Pahle to ye jo hai receipt hai, as paisa aayega. So it's a capital receipt. So this is wrong. While equity financing is considered as revenue expenditure. Kya ye equity financing revenue expenditure hai? जी नहीं इक्विटी फाइनेंसिंग में पैसा आ रहा है इट मींस इट्स अ रिसीट बट इट इज अ कैपिटल रिसीट इट इज कमिंग फॉर लॉन्ग रन सो आंसर इज ए सेकंड स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग हियर इन दिस क्वेश्चन नो लेट्स डू क्वेश्चन नंबर 31 हियर इट आस्क्ड अबाउट व्हाट इज इंक्लूडेड इन द एफडी व्हाट वी हैव डन इट इंक्लूड्स इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स कन्वर्टिबल डिवेंचर्स and it should be more than 10% first statement says it includes foreign currency convertible bonds yes this is true fii with certain conditions what is the condition it should be more than 10% so first is true and second is true third one gdr this is also fdi we will do this in detail in next lecture non resident external deposits what it is it's a banking capital इट मीन्स जो एन आर डिपोजिट करते हैं इंडियन बैंक में फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन एच डी एफ सी सो आंसर इज ए वन टू एंड थ्री कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट द इफेक्ट ऑफ डिवेल्यूशन ऑफ द करेंसी इज दैट इट नेसेसरली हेयर आई वॉन्ट टू शो दिस नेसेसरली वर्ड हेयर यू नीड टू फोकस एज वेयर इफ इट इज गिवन इन द स्टेटमेंट then you need to eliminate that statement if what necessarily means it means it needs to be true in every circumstance let's read first statement it improves the competitiveness of the domestic exports in the foreign market it is a repeated statement let me show you here you can see in this upsc is asking about the reducing the current account deficit how it can be reduced by increasing the exports and decreasing the import first question says first statement says devaluing the domestic currency here we have seen like if person in us has to buy goods at 80000 rupees then he needs to pay 1000 dollars if this price of dollar has increased to 82 it means ru rupee has been devaluated or depreciated it means now the price reduced to 975 dollar this reduced price will increase the demand and increasing the exports similar question asked in 1999 devaluation of the currency may promote export this is true so it says it improves the competitiveness of the domestic exports in the foreign market yes as indian product ki jo price hai us market mein wo kam ho jayegi but agar is statement mein aisa likha hota hai it will increase the exports in the foreign market will that be necessarily true no but it will increase the competitiveness so first statement is correct we are left with a and b let's read second statement increases the foreign value of the domestic currency if we say devaluation it means pehle agar dollar ki value rupees 40 thi aur wahi dollar ki value agar 50 rupees ho gayi hai yahan pe rupee ki value kitni aayegi aur agar 50 rupees hai to rupee ki value kitni hogi Now you can see, अगर रुपी डी वैल्यू हो रहा है तो क्या उसकी फॉरन वैल्यू 
इंक्रीज होगी या डिक्रीज हेयर यू कैन सी इट इज डिक्रीजिंग सो आंसर इज ए थर्ड स्टेटमेंट से इट विल इंप्रूव द ट्रेड बैलेंस विल इट बी ट्रू नो मे बी इट विल इंक्रीज द एक्सपोर्ट बट विथ डिवेल्युएशन ऑफ रूपी इंपोर्ट विल बी कॉस्टली दिस इज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस लेक्चर हेयर द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट नीर एंड रीर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड नॉमिनल और रियल में क्या डिफरेंस है अगर हम नॉमिनल में इन्फ्लेशन की एडजस्टमेंट कर दे तो क्या बच जाएगा हमारे पास रियल इट मीन्स अगर हम नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट में से इन्फ्लेशन को एडजस्ट कर देंगे तो हमारे पास रियल एक्सचेंज रेट आ जाएगा हाउ वी विल एडजस्ट दैट नीर इज इक्वल टू नीर मल्टीप्लाइड विथ इंडियन इन्फ्लेशन डिवाइडेड बाय यूएस इन्फ्लेशन देन वी विल बी लेफ्ट विथ रीर हेयर थर्ड स्टेटमेंट सेज इंक्रीजिंग ट्रेड इन डोमेस्टिक इन्फ्लेशन रिलेटिंग टू इन्फ्लेशन इन अदर कंट्रीज इज लाइकली टू कॉज एंड डायवर्जेंस बिटवीन ऑब्वियस सी बात है अगर इन्फ्लेशन जितना ज्यादा बढ़ेगा उतना ज्यादा डायवर्जेंस उसमें बढ़ जाएगा सो थर्ड इज ट्रू सो वी कैन एलिमिनेट स्टेटमेंट वी आर लेफ्ट विथ बी सी एंड डी हेयर यू कैन सी द फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट सेज इफ देर इज ए इंक्रीज इन नीड इट इंडिकेट्स एप्रिसिएशन ऑफ रूपी इफ देर इज एप्रिसिएशन ऑफ रूपी इट मीन्स पहले अगर डॉलर एटी रुपीज का था अब वही डॉलर एटी टू रुपीज का है हमने देखा है कि अगर रूपी एप्रिशिएट होता है उससे एक्सपोर्ट क्या होंगे रिड्यूस सो ये इसकी ट्रेड कॉम्पिटिटिवनेस कम करेगा बट सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट से इज इट विल इंप्रूव इन ट्रेड कॉम्पिटिटिवनेस हेयर यू कैन एटलीस्ट एलिमिनेट ऑप्शन फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड फर्स्ट एंड फोर्थ एज दीज कान गो टूगेदर अगर एप्रिशिएट होगा तो ट्रेड कॉम्पिटिटिवनेस कम होगी सो वन एंड टू एंड वन टू एंड थ्री कैन बी एलिमिनेटेड वी आर लेफ्ट विथ बी एंड सी नाउ यू हैव टू सी अगर डॉलर की वैल्यू फोर्टी रुपीज थी अब अगर उसी डॉलर की वैल्यू फिफ्टी रुपीज हो जाए तो यहां पर रुपये की वैल्यू कितनी है नाउ यू हैव टू सी अगर नीर इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो रुपये एप्रिशिएट हो रहा है नहीं नीर का इंक्रीज होने का मतलब क्या है इट इज इंक्रीजिंग एज जो नीर और रीर है वो रूपी के टर्म्स में प्राइस बताता है तो अगर इट इज इंक्रीजिंग द रूपी इज एप्रिशिएटिंग येस इट मीन्स हमें कम रूपी चाहिए टू बाय डॉलर पहले पचास रूपीज चाहिए थे लेकिन अभी चालीस रुपए ही चाहिए टू बाय डॉलर सो इट्स एप्रिशिएशन ऑफ रूपी सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट कांट गो विथ फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट सो द आंसर इज वन एंड थ्री दैट इज आंसर सी If you have any doubt, you can reach out to me on Instagram and Gmail. Link is given in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.